been quite a ride. Um, I am embarking on my 14th year in the industry. I've got the best job in the world. I work around some of the most amazing people. I have access to people that inspire me and motivate me to do what I do and, and, and try to take it a little bit further, push myself out of my comfort zone. I get to talk to hairdressers just like you. I get to find out what works for you and what's not working. And together we start to discover solutions to these challenges, whether it be you know, effective conversation inside of the salon experience to initiate retail sales without seeming like a salesman, right? Or, or, or just simply understanding how can we take this, this demon of haircutting that, that's, that's kind of preconceived in a lot of our minds, how can we take this and turn it into an angel? Simplify it. Make it pure. Make it simple. Make it feel good. Stripping down a lot of the things that, that, that don't make sense. And you know what? There's a place for everything. I'll, I'll, I'll say it wholeheartedly. There's a place for everything. But my belief is this. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to try and reinvent fire. <laughs> The wheel rolls well and fire burns hot. But what we need to do is we need to learn how to be more responsible with the wheel. How do we make the wheel more efficient? How do we improve the tread on the tires? How do we make the fire burn longer? How do we make the fire burn safer? All of these ideas and these philosophies are really the core of, of, of why I do what I do. If it wasn't for sharing and having this opportunity with all of you, I probably would have wound, wound up driving tractors on the farm with my father. You know, so, I don't know. I don't know. Would this, would this have worked on a tractor? <laughs> so enough of that. Um, today's class, Bob to the Third Power, the origin, history, and evolution of Bob. You know, as I said in the beginning of the class, this, this came to me as an idea one night, and I, I was woken out of a, just a, a restless sleep, and I said to myself, God, I'd really love to create something with some sort of content that people could get excited about that would share some information that most of you probably already know. I'm not going to come up here and say today, like, I am going to reprogram your mind on how Bob were cut. No. We understand the core foundations of one length, layering, graduation, right? We understand these ideas and concepts are there. I'm going to show you how to put them together and why I put them together the way I do based on the suitability of my lovely model. Head shape, bone structure, density, hairlines, proportions, texture. All of these elements and more we're going to discuss. But what I really wanted to do with this was originally before he, he once I got accepted to my class proposal, I had this idea of, of making a short film. And the original idea was to make a little short film that I could show you guys in the first like three to five minutes of my classroom time. And this short film, I wanted to grab some people that inspired me, that I've had the opportunity to either watch from afar or watch next to, and observe them work, observe their place in history, and what they've done for us as an industry. And, and really, I mean, if it wasn't for some of these people that came to my mind, I don't think most of us would be here today. Uh, I wanted to put together a film that I could share with you guys, but then what started happening is, is I, I put out a letter. I wrote the letter, hey, I, you know, I, I, this is Chad Clark, you know, I submitted my proposal to ISSE for the third year in a row, and I finally got accepted. I want to make something special. Would you mind contributing some, you know, some footage for me? Film it on a cell phone, film it on a camera, whatever you want to do, but just talk about the bomb. I gave him like six questions. I said, tell me what you think about the Bob. Because you, of all people, the people on this list, you, you, you are Bob. Like, you're, you're an extension of Bob because of uh, what they've done with Bob and who they've worked with with Bob. And Bob, Bob, Bob. It's just, I wanted to figure out how I could bring their voices together and share with all of you. And I, honestly, I thought maybe one or two of them would be like, yeah, no problem, kid. I suddenly started getting everybody that I sent a message to to respond to me. And it went from 2 to 5 to 7 to 10 to 13 to 17 to 20 people. It's just been overwhelming, the amount of people who saw value inside of this idea. So because of all the footage that we've compiled, um, we decided to take it a step further and create a 90-minute film, documentary style film about Bob. So we put together this, this, this film. Um, as of today, we're going to be releasing right now in this classroom the trailer of the film. Now, the goal of this film is to share about the Bob. 
history, origin, evolution. We brought together some amazing people. You're going to get to see their faces. <coughs> summer, this summer, 2015, we're going to be releasing the film. We're going to be looking to do an online platform where you can go and stream the film for maybe two or three dollars. It's not going to be a lot. But guess what? Every single penny from this movie is going to a cause. The Thirst Project. Yeah! yeah. about this being a money project, but you know what, with the people that we have involved in here, I can tell you this, every single one of you in this classroom is going to want to watch it just to hear what these people have to say. A couple of them are here in the classroom today. Stephen Moody, thank you so much for Thank you, Jerry, John Spielberg. Anybody else in here I'm not seeing? That might be in the film? Who's here? Ian Gave, there you are. I mean, seriously, you guys, this is just a couple of them, right? Just a couple people, but it's fantastic. Um, so, without further ado, we're going to play our short film trailer. We're going to move into a presentation talking about the ten bobs that uh, I pre-cut and styled. We're going to do a little bit of diagramming just to kind of discuss the hows and the whys of the technique. And then we're going to move into a live haircut presentation with my lovely little model here. All right. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. Ready? Oh my god, the thank you. Howie! Lights! Ah. Wow, right? I mean, exciting stuff here, guys. Exciting stuff. And this is just a teaser. That was probably three-fourths of the people on board. Some of the people didn't actually have opportunities to submit footage in time for us to get them on there. But we've got a handful more people that are going to blow your minds. And, and really, the content whether it be photo imagery, um, whether it be insights into uh, the hows and the whys of, 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 the, of, of the beginning of Bob. I mean, it, it's, just, it's just been the biggest honor and pleasure to put something like this together and to have these people uh, that have agreed to uh, help me with my vision. It's, it's just been fantastic. So. Thank you. That was going to be Bob to the third power. It's going to be appearing 2015 this summer. Keep your eyes open for it. Big applause to Ruben Smith. Yeah. Yeah. So give me a head with hair. Long, beautiful hair. <laughs> Let's start talking about these presentation mannequins for a moment. Now, the idea here today, and working through this journey, was really to give us a little bit of an insight inside of how Bob has moved through time and how Chad will trip over cords on the stage. What is a Bob? Uh, shorter layers on the bottom, longer on top. Okay, shorter layers on bottom, longer on top. That could be a version of Bob, could it not? Really describing a bit more of the distribution of weight that's happening with Bob, right? Mm -hmm. But what really is definitive of Bob? When you see something, you know it's Bob. What is it? The shoulder. What's Blunt. that? It's blunt line. Say it again. It's over the, the shoulder. shoulder. Over the shoulder. It's your hat. <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 I like that. Over the shoulders, though. How about something that just graces right in here? Now, are there any limitations on how short this can go up? No. I mean, really, once we start moving into a pixie cut, we're changing, we're, we're changing technique and idea of, of our approach of the haircut, the purpose of the haircut, right? You start getting into these pixies, you're trying to, you're trying to really accentuate the head shape, right? So we're changing the ball game when the hair gets that short. But I mean, thank you, sir. And all ten of them fit. That's pretty awesome. Squeeze them in there at the bottom at the end for me. Look at my girls. Right there. Look at all my pretty maids all in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Garrett Sammy. So, the many faces of Bob, and this is just touching the surface, really. But what defines and characterizes Bob, as we've all agreed to inside the classroom, is 
Word lives in length, right? That's what's definitive of it. And as we said in the film, or as, as I said, we, like I got a crick in my pocket. As I said in the film, you know, the origin of Bob is argumentative. And you could argue about this all day. I mean, you've seen Cleopatra and Nefertiti depicted on hieroglyphics where, you know, black bobs. But really, inside of American culture, the presence of Bob really hit in the 1920s, right? I mean, ladies, this was a big deal for you. The 1920s changed the social, demographical world of how women were perceived and treated <coughs> inside of our country. It was just the start. It wasn't the definitive finish, but it was the start. We were starting to hear your voices. Finally, right? God, how long does it take a man to listen to you? <laughs> right? No, but the idea here was is that you were liberated. You started to see that the, the social stigmas of what people, men in the society at that time, were telling you were normal, were aesthetically beautiful, were no longer true. You changed your mind. You said, I'm trying something different. That long hair that was normally pinned and curled and twisted and set, it started coming off. We started working ourselves into the flapper bobs. In the 1920s, it's said that the first bob was cut by a barber. And that the barber actually went through and used his shears to create the line around the sides of the face of the young lady. And then went in with a razor, supposedly, and shingled, as they called it back then, the nape. Creating a nice lean set of the hair with a nice strong shape around the sides. Started squared and started changing. But what started to change about Bob wasn't necessarily just the cut, but it was why the cut was changing. We started to recognize something now that we were removing all this hair. <gasps> Ladies, you've got beautiful faces. You've got cheekbones. You've got neck lines, jaw lines. You've got eyes, noses, lips. All of these things that make you beautiful, am I right? <laughs> Well, what can we do to accentuate those ideas? The lines, the geometries we work with inside of the haircut. So Bob started to change a little bit, even after it was born. The square flat lines started becoming a bit more rounded. The cheekbones to help open up, push away from the face, start to expose a little bit more. This haircut was achieved simply by pre-sectioning off from the occipital bone to behind the ears. Taking all this hair out, I didn't just go in and take it off with scissor or comb. No. There was a process to building up this weight line to where I wanted it first. Would you like me to share that? Just call him. Nice and high for me, buddy. <laughs> so, beginning of that, working off my natural parting in the center, I took a section from occipital bone to right about the ear area. Now all this area underneath here I had to deal with first, so I continued my center parting. I took my sections a bit more on the horizontal diagonal, very subtly diagonal. Higher, please. Can you hold it up a little higher? higher. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, on, there Anna. we go. That helps me too. Then I took, each section was cut at finger's width to the head shape. One finger's width. Does that make sense? One finger's width to the head shape slightly elevating each section. I was lifting it littlest of bits, each section that I went up. Not too much. What happens when we <coughs> lift hair, ladies and gentlemen? Layering. Okay, what is layering? Or graduation. Or graduation, okay. But what happens when we lift? We either are, we're making hair lighter. We're making hair lighter. The higher we lift it, the lighter it becomes. The lower we direct it, the fuller and heavier it becomes. Layers versus graduation, right? Let's simplify these ideas. The section angle that I chose was to help me create strength inside of the shape. I didn't want to lean it out much. I wanted to create a nice full shape for it to sit under. So my horizontal sections helped me create a fuller shape on that rounded surface, okay? Every section was lifted slightly higher until I got to the occipital bone. Once that happened, everything started taking a journey. Larger sections were even taken up the back. I actually worked the entire crown of this haircut dry. 
so that way I can allow it to drop down and settle perfectly on top of the length that I chose for the underneath. Every, every subsection thereafter was brought straight down to that weight line at the occipital bone. Took some, took some time utilizing the comb to help remove tension, right? Tapping on it, like you know you did in beauty school and you're trying to release that tension over the ear, right? Taking the same core fundamental ideas that we all know how to do and applying them systematically. This helped me achieve a nice subtle bevel right on the underneath of this section of the graduation, right? But still create form through the control of low elevation, blunt line cutting throughout the side. Beautiful, simplistic. Then I shear over combed the underneath. Wanted to get it nice and tight to really accentuate the geometry we've created in the back. Moving into the front, I initially started with this square. But you know what I noticed? I noticed this corner here was eating up her jawline, eating up her cheekbones. I lost her. And while she may be a mannequin, she's still pretty. She's got eyelashes. <laughs> I still wanted to be able to demonstrate the idea of what do we look for inside of the finishing, the refinement, the customization of Bob. It's the bone structure. It's the individual. That's what we're searching for. So simply by rounding off the corners, ever so slightly in my fingers, so I can create a little soft edge on the bottom, we created a little bit more open palette to really expose the beauty of this classic 1920s ball. We went through something a little classic, now let's talk about something a little bit more creative. Now the idea today that I think inside of jumping into evolution of Bob is we're seeing a lot of texture, are we not? I mean, isn't everybody these days clamoring to get the next waver, crimper, you know, loose beach wave set inside of their haircuts? I mean, every ombre or balayage that we see on social media today has those loose beach curls, right? So Bob can wear it too. We discovered this throughout the 1930s and 40s and 50s even, where Bob started to evolve. What started to happen was, is let's think about it. So now women are getting the right to vote. They're being seen and heard. They're being acknowledged. The industry starts to recognize that, hey, these ladies are changing the way they look. How could we capitalize on this? So what starts happening? We start to develop, there, there's more presence and development of tools to help style and techniques, the pin curl, the roller sets, right? The soft brushings. The texture started getting introduced to the ball. Throughout 1930 to 1950, Bob's got a little longer. What you saw, if you research, Bob's got longer in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s simply because women were settled in. They kind of did their rah in the 1920s, like we're here, but then they wanted to slowly settle themselves back into society a bit. But what started to happen was is they were starting to celebrate the styling. Okay, so we started seeing pin curls, like I said, roller sets, perming started hitting the tables, right? The bobs started changing in texture. Now, to work with texture inside of bobs, we have to rethink how we approach the cut of the bob. Now, this is where some of my, my trainings and my personal background differs from other people in that I've been exposed to a lot of different approaches in hair cutting. Precision sassoon, texture, round brushes, product, and Tony and Guy. And then finally, it's almost like a hybrid of condensed precision and texture with Paul Mitchell. Those three companies really helped shape me and who I am today inside of my belief system in cutting hair. And I really feel that there's something to be taken from each one. So inside of developing texture, what did I take from that experience? Dry work. I personally like working with the hair dry. I'm not going to razor cut the hair dry. I'm not going to pull out thinning shears on the hair dry. But what I am going to do is that I'm going to utilize my shears in a different manner to help me create softness and separation and diffusion inside of the shape. I can still execute control with my section angle elevation and cutting line preferences. But now, we just want, I, I wanted to start seeing something just a little bit softer. So how did I create softness inside of the surface of this bob? Little technique a lot of you have seen before, probably out there on the showroom floor on the stage. A little bit of a loose stroking. Coming in and out of the technique. 
creating softness, diffusion inside of the fabric. So you have a separation. The short hairs can support the long hairs. You can encourage more curl and movement inside. This is very salon reality, too. This is what your guests are looking for. So while we're going through this history lesson, we need to pick out what's valuable inside of this because all of it is relatable. I work behind the chair just like you do. I'm tr that's, just where, that's where I make my living. So these techniques help push me through this and help give me more diversity inside of, my t inside of what I can offer my clients. So getting into the technique here, we still see a buildup of graduation, do we not? Yeah. Do we see the buildup of weight happening up into the top of the shape? A little bit more bumped on the underneath, a little fuller as we came to the top? Well, to achieve this, first of all, I cut it again, I cut it dry. Cut the whole thing dry. We started in the back of the shape. I pre-section first, right underneath the occipital bone, as I wanted to build my perimeter first. I dropped everything down from right underneath, not at the occipital bone, underneath the occipital bone. And there's a difference in that because it depends upon how much outline perimeter you're going to be stuck with depending on how high or low you go above that little bump in the back of the head. You go too high, you're going to have a big, fat, chubby bottom. If you want that, that's cool. When we, we do that, so we find density. Cool. But because of the texture of the mannequin, didn't want that to happen. Brought everything down using my comb as a brace and the tips of my shears. I point cut everything in very loose, right to the underneath of the section. Everything straight down, one length, no elevation, using my comb and the tips of my shears to create the softness. Okay? Once this was done, we moved through. We took our sections right above this area and continued with this very slight vertical diagonal section. Now, vertical sections in hair cutting, we understand, they remove weight from the hair. When you use a section straight up and down on the rounded surface, we're going to make the shape lighter. If you use a horizontal section across a haircut, Remember, you're going to make a heavier shape. Anybody ever tried just for fun layering hair in horizontal subsections? Anybody ever tried it? It's interesting, isn't it? It's a different kind of layer. It's still a layer. And sometimes you can make it work. But again, the idea is, is know why and when you're doing what you're playing with. So back to here. My section angles were diagonal as I was achieving a graduated shape because, of course, my, my cutting line matched my section angle. Make sense? Very good. Now, as we went back, I pulled everything just slightly down into the center, just swooping these sections down into the center so that way I can create a nice full head shape at the mastoid, at the round of the head here. Okay, I'm going to do a little demonstration on that and show you what I mean. I really don't like it. So you cut it diagonally the other way and then you're going to overdraft through. it the other way and cut it again? Connecting, so that underneath would drop out. That's going to be my guide, right? Mm -hmm. So now coming through here, I went in with the tips of my scissors, and I stroked through the underneath. <coughs> we went through something a little classic. Now let's talk about something a little bit more creative. Now the idea today that I think inside of jumping into evolution of Bob is we're seeing a lot of texture, are we not? I mean, isn't everybody these days clamoring to get the next waver, crimper, you know, loose beach wave set inside of their haircuts? I mean, every ombre or balayage that we see on social media today has those loose beach curls, right? So Bob can wear it too. We discovered this throughout the 1930s and 40s and 50s even, where Bob started to evolve. What started to happen was, is let's think about it. So now women are getting the right to vote. They're being seen and heard. They're being acknowledged. The industry starts to recognize that, hey, these ladies are changing the way they look. How could we capitalize on this? So what starts happening? We start to develop, there, there's more presence and development of tools to help style and techniques, the pin curl, the roller sets, right? The soft brushings. The texture started getting introduced to the ball. Throughout 1930 to 1950, Bob's got a little longer. 
what you saw if you research. Bob's got longer in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s simply because women were settled in. They kind of did their rah in the 1920s, like we're here. But then they wanted to slowly settle themselves back into society a bit. But what started to happen was is they were starting to celebrate the styling. Okay, so we started seeing pin curls, like I said, roller sets, perming started hitting the tables, right? The bobs started changing in texture. Now, to work with texture inside of bobs, we have to rethink how we approach the cut of the bob. Now, this is where some of my, my trainings and my personal background differs from other people in that I've been exposed to a lot of different approaches in haircutting. Precision sassoon, texture, round brushes, product, and Tony and Guy. And then finally, it's almost like a hybrid of condensed precision and texture with Paul Mitchell. Those three companies really helped shape me and who I am today inside of my belief system in cutting hair. And I really feel that there's something to be taken from each one. So inside of developing texture, what did I take from that experience? Dry work. I personally like working with the hair dry. I'm not going to razor cut the hair dry. I'm not going to pull out thinning shears on the hair dry. But what I am going to do is that I'm going to utilize my shears in a different manner to help me create softness and separation and diffusion inside of the shape. I can still execute control with my section angle, elevation, and cutting line preferences. But now, we want, I, I wanted to start seeing something just a little bit softer. So how did I create softness inside of the surface of this bob? little technique a lot of you have seen before, probably out there on the showroom floor, on the stage. A little bit of a loose stroking. Coming in and out of the technique. Creating softness, diffusion inside of the fabric. So you have a separation. The short hairs can support the long hairs. You can encourage more curl and movement inside. This is very salon reality too. This is what your guests are looking for. So while we're going through this history lesson, we need to pick out what's valuable inside of this because all of it is relatable. I work behind the chair just like you do. I'm tr that's, is where, that's where I make my living. So these techniques help push me through this and help give me more diversity inside of, my t inside of what I can offer my clients. So getting into the technique here, we still see a buildup of graduation, do we not? Yeah. Do we see the buildup of weight happening up into the top of the shape? A little bit more bumped on the underneath, a little fuller as we came to the top? Well, to achieve this, first of all, I cut it again, I cut it dry. Cut the whole thing dry. We started in the back of the shape. I pre-sectioned first, right underneath the occipital bone. As I wanted to build my perimeter first. I dropped everything down from right underneath, not at the occipital bone, underneath the occipital bone. And there's a difference in that because it depends upon how much outline perimeter you're going to be stuck with depending on how high or low you go above that little bump in the back of the head. You go too high, you're going to have a big, fat, chubby bottom. If you want that, that's cool. When we, we do that, some of the fine density. Cool. But because of the texture of the mannequin, didn't want that to happen. Brought everything down using my comb as a brace and the tips of my shears. I point cut everything in very loose, right to the underneath the section. Everything straight down, one length, no elevation, using my comb and the tips of my shears to create the softness. Okay? Once this was done, we moved through. We took our sections right above this area and continued with this very slight vertical diagonal section. Now, vertical sections in haircutting, we understand. <coughs> They remove weight from the hair. When you use a section straight up and down on the rounded surface, we're going to make the shape lighter. If you use a horizontal section across a haircut, remember, you're going to make a heavier shape. Anybody ever tried just for fun layering hair in horizontal subsections? Anybody ever tried it? It's interesting, isn't it? It's a different kind of layer. It's still a layer. And sometimes you can make it work. But again, the idea is, is Know why and when you're doing what you're playing with. So back to here. My section angles were diagonal as I was achieving a graduated shape because, of course, my, my cutting line matched my section angle. Make sense? Yeah. Very good. Now, as we went back, I pulled everything just slightly down into the center. 
the swooping these sections down into the center so that way I can create a nice full head shape at the mastoid, at the round of the head here. Okay, I'm going to do a little demonstration on that and show you what I mean. So you cut it diagonally the other way and then you're going to so over direct it the other way and cut it again? Connecting so that underneath would drop out. That's going to be my guide, right? Mm -hmm. So now coming through here, I went in with the tips of my scissors and I stroke through the underneath. <coughs> we went through something a little classic. Now let's talk about something a little bit more creative. Now the idea today that I think inside of jumping into evolution of Bob is we're seeing a lot of texture, are we not? I mean, isn't everybody these days clamoring to get the next waver, crimper, you know, loose beach wave set inside of their haircuts? I mean, every ombre or balayage that we see on social media today has those loose beach curls, right? So Bob can wear it too. We discovered this throughout the 1930s and 40s and 50s even, where Bob started to evolve. What started to happen was, is let's think about it. So now women are getting the right to vote. They're being seen and heard. They're being acknowledged. The industry starts to recognize that, hey, these ladies are changing the way they look. How could we capitalize on this? So what starts happening? We start to develop, there, there's more presence and development of tools to help style and techniques, the pin curl, the roller sets, right, the soft brushings. The texture started getting introduced to the bomb. Throughout 1930 to 1950, Bob's got a little longer. What you saw, if you research, Bob's got longer in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s simply because women were settled in. They kind of did their rah in the 1920s, like we're here, but then they wanted to slowly settle themselves back into society a bit. But what started to happen was is they were starting to celebrate the styling. Okay, so we started seeing pin curls, like I said, roller sets, perming started hitting the tables, right? The bobs started changing in texture. Now, to work with texture inside of bobs, we have to rethink how we approach the cut of the bob. Now, this is where some of my, my trainings and my personal background differs from other people in that I've been exposed to a lot of different approaches in hair cutting. Precision sassoon, texture, round brushes, product, and Tony and Guy. And then finally, it's almost like a hybrid of condensed precision and texture with Paul Mitchell. Those three companies really helped shape me and who I am today inside of my belief system in cutting hair. And I really feel that there's something to be taken from each one. So inside of developing texture, what did I take from that experience? Dry work. I personally like working with the hair dry. I'm not going to razor cut the hair dry. I'm not going to pull out thinning shears on the hair dry. But what I am going to do is that I'm going to utilize my shears in a different manner to help me create softness and separation and diffusion inside of the shape. I can still execute control with my section angle elevation and cutting line preferences. But now, we just want, I, I wanted to start seeing something just a little bit softer. So how did I create softness inside of the surface of this ball? little technique a lot of you have seen before, probably out there on the showroom floor, on the stage. A little bit of a loose stroking. Coming in and out of the technique. Creating softness, diffusion inside of the fabric. So you have a separation. The short hairs can support the long hairs. You can encourage more curl and movement inside. This is very salon reality too. This is what your guests are looking for. So while we're going through this history lesson, we need to pick out what's valuable inside of this because all of it is relatable. I work behind the chair just like you do. I'm tr that's, is where, that's where I make my living. So these techniques help push me through this and help give me more diversity inside of, my t inside of what I can offer my clients. So getting into the technique here, we still see a buildup of graduation, do we not? Yeah. Do we see the buildup of weight happening up into the top of the shape? A little bit more bumped on the underneath, a little fuller as we came to the top? Well, to achieve this, first of all, I cut it again, I cut it dry. Cut the whole thing dry. We started in the back of the shape. I pre-section first, right underneath the occipital bone, as I wanted to build my perimeter first. I dropped everything down from right underneath, not at the occipital bone, underneath the occipital bone. 
And there's a difference in that because it depends upon how much outline perimeter you're going to be stuck with depending on how high or low you go above that little bump in the back of the head. You go too high, you're going to have a big, fat, chubby bottom. If you want that, that's cool. When we, we do that, so we would find density. Cool. But because of the texture of the mannequin, didn't want that to happen. Brought everything down using my comb as a brace and the tips of my shears. I point cut everything in very loose, right to the underneath of the section. Everything straight down, one length, no elevation, using my comb and the tips of my shears to create the softness. Okay? Once this was done, we moved through. We took our sections right above this area and continued with this very slight vertical diagonal section. Now vertical sections in hair cutting, we understand, they remove weight from the hair. When you use a section straight up and down on the rounded surface, we're going to make the shape lighter. If you use a horizontal section across a haircut, remember, you're going to make a heavier shape. Anybody ever tried just for fun layering hair in horizontal subsections? Anybody ever tried it? It's interesting, isn't it? It's a different kind of layer. It's still a layer. And sometimes you can make it work. But again, the idea is, is know why and when you're doing what you're playing with. So back to here. My section angles were diagonal as I was achieving a graduated shape because, of course, my, my cutting line matched my section angle. Make sense? Yeah. Very good. Now, as we went back, I pulled everything just slightly down into the center, just swooping these sections down into the center so that way I can create a nice full head shape at the mastoid, at the round of the head here. Okay, I'm going to do a little demonstration on that and show you what I mean. So you cut it diagonally the other way and then you're going to so overdirect through. it the other way and cut it again? Connecting, so that underneath would drop out. That's going to be my guide, right? Mm -hmm. So now coming through here, I went in with the tips of my scissors and I stroked through the underneath. <laughs> Whoa, she couldn't even handle it. But I took out just, just enough to create that connection point with what I had established on the underneath. Then each section thereafter is over directed into the center. You guys want to see? This is that motion. Simple. Open and close. I'm not just going to slice and drag, it's going to rip the cuticle up. This is actually giving me a clean slice so I'm not risking the integrity of the fabric. <coughs> Make sense? Yeah. It's all about the long-term grow-out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you can see, each one of those sections was brought back into the center. As I moved into <coughs> the sides, we continued with our over direction. You're doing great, Garrett. Oh. Let's give Garrett another big round of applause. <laughs> Now those three sections right there were handled a little bit differently. Again, wanted to create a very loose, soft texture. I brought them down first and connected a loose outline shape from what was established in the back. And then I took each of those individual sections that were slightly diagonal. I rolled them just slightly. And I did just a little bit of dry slicing down to my predetermined perimeter. It took out just enough weight, it encouraged the curl, and it gave me a nice soft finish around the bob. My little fishtail fringe here, I'm really having some fun with these little fishtails lately. I don't know, if you look at it, it kind of looks like a koi fish because you've got this nice strong little shape here, and then the little fin tail that kind of kicks out from the front there. That was really just to kind of have some fun. I mean, at the end of the day, we've got to have a little fun with our work, right? Okay, so this idea here conceptually was just <coughs> demonstrating the texture that's put inside of Bob and how utilizing graduation on a longer softer shape will still give us a beautiful fall, a beautiful feel and something a little bit more bohemian which you throw some beautiful highlights, soft paint and hand melt, it's going to look fantastic. Any questions on this so far? Please. Don't. And then kind of opening pulled all the way down to the Exactly. All the way down to my pre-existing leg. You're twisting forward or back? Forward? I'm twisting, I'm twisting backwards. Okay. Very good question. I'm twisting it backwards so that way the whole flow of this shape as it unravels 
moves forward. So let's just say I hold it and I twist it back and away from the face. Okay, not up and back, down and back. Totally. Now moving into something a bit more, moving into something a bit more classic, I'm going to go over about two more of these and then we're getting into the live haircut. Okay. Okay, just two more and then uh, while the dry haircut's getting blow dried and styled, we'll wrap up these, come back in for the dry finish and we're ready to rock and roll. Okay? How many of you guys like round shapes? How many of you guys like round shapes? Yeah, let's hear it. I'm curious. You know, these rounded shapes can be really, really tricky. Can I get an amen? Yeah. yeah. These round shapes look beautiful when executed, but they're hard. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, round shapes and me, um, I have, have a bit of a, a, a funny backstory. You know, I, I used to avoid them at every cost I could. If there was any opportunity, I could not put something around on somebody simply because of the approach and, and, and the control I felt I lacked earlier on in my career, I would do it. But now, as I've moved through and really started not overcomplicating the idea of the rounded shape, I seem to have found a system that worked really simply for me to create this idea. So working through this haircut was, um, was one of my first ones out of the ten that I created. And really coming in first off with more of a, or excuse me, a vertical subsection. Starting off with a vertical subsection like this, you know, not really, not really doing that common law of cutting line versus section angle, breaking the rule, but understanding the purpose of what I'm doing. Now, taking this vertical section angle here, this is allowing the hair to fall right at its natural point. There's not a lot of unnecessary over direction moving around inside of the hair as it falls here. So, with this in mind, what my goal was was to make this cutting line as simple as I could and as quickly as I could and achieve the result I was after. So, starting in the front, right front and center, I elevated ever so slightly, dusted my line, and dropped. Made sure at all times it was a natural fall, and yes, the hair was wet. Not, not moving the mannequin or the chair, moving myself. We forget about kinesthetics, ladies and gentlemen. You know, yeah, the chair moves. People tell me that all the time. You know, the chair moves. The chair spins. The chair goes up and down. <laughs> yeah, that's not new technology. But what happens is, is we get too comfortable. You gotta move. It is not rare for me to be seen inside the salon. Me too, baby. You know, I'm sorry. The chair just doesn't go as high as I need it to go. And so, back to kinesthetics. I'm gonna move around this mannequin. So I took my next step, I lifted, I cut. Took my next step, lifted, cut. Everything went in this manner, rotating all the way around the back. Plain and simple, not overthinking the shape itself, but allowing that my body movement and where I stand in relationship to elevating and holding this was going to create the effect I was after. Doesn't that make it simple? Really though, you start spinning the chair, oh, wait a minute, did I spin the chair the same way on the other side? Well, where did I spin the chair? Which side did you need like tape markers around your chair? Never stop. <laughs> but when we just start moving naturally, with our shapes and with our with our with our work, we start to find it's 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 almost kind of like a little dance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a little swing. Yeah. How different would that would you have started on that with curly hair? With curly hair, I feel that the only difference I would have really been mindful of first off would be moisture content inside of the hair. Um, everybody's a little different, and when you're depend geek out really quick, okay? Now, when you're working with curly hair, there's a few different levels of curl. So every level of curl requires a different attention level for me. If I'm working with kinky curly hair, like really kinky ethnic tight curly hair, I'm going to go in there with a tight tooth comb and full tension and damp. Uh, people are like, what? That's like, I thought you were supposed to... I like the spring back. I plan for the spring back. So when I go in and execute my selection of length and I cut it, it pops right back into where I want it and the shape is ten times stronger. But when I have a loose, kind of wavy, kind of lazy curl, I'm going to go in with just 
a little bit of moisture, not a lot, and I'm going to use a wide tooth comb, and my, my fingers are going to be very, very deft, like very deft moves. There's not a lot of pull, there's not a lot of tension. Everything is very soft and delicate to allow for that hair not to have such a strong recoil. Because really, guys, that's what changes the game for us as hair cutters is moisture. Moisture is what changes the success of your cut. That's why I love cutting dry hair. That's why I'm inspired by Albi Mulcahy and John Sahag that used to cut the dry hair. That were the, the pioneers of the dry hair cutting movement. That's why I love it so much because there's a huge place for it. Now, I'll still play with the wet game too, but I love some dry hair cutting because moisture changes the game more often than not, works against us, lies to us while we're working, lies to the get. What does it do? It creates weight. What is weight? It creates stretch. What is stretch? It creates recoil. What is recoil? It creates unevenness. You know, I learned, I mean, you guys, I'm going to give you a little sneak, little, little tidbit from this movie we're going to release. Christopher Broker, hands. Christopher Broker from Vidal Sassoon, one of the most amazing artistic directors that that company had. And one of, one of my opinions, he was one of my favorites. I mean, you know, Christopher, you've got Roger, you've got uh, Tim, but I, I love, I'm a huge Christopher fan. He's on this film, and he shares with us, now, this has never been talked about. They never shared it. There wasn't a lot of dialogue back then. It was watch, watch Vidal, watch Roger. You know, watch Trevor, watch these guys cut. They didn't talk a lot. There wasn't really much verbiage to it all until Alan Binfield came in and kind of helped really give some, some, some terminology to this all. But really there wasn't a lot of this. Christopher gets on this film, gives me 18 minutes of conversation in the camera and tells us how they used to cut the bobs on Bond Street. It is the first time this information has ever been shared publicly. I don't care how many Sassoon classes we've been to, I've worked for them, I did their Cosmo before I worked for them. I've never heard this. It blew me away. And so, really exciting, when this film comes out in the summertime, you're going to hear about how they did it. And all I'm going to tell you is this, it involved moisture and dry. The, the balance and understanding of both of the elements. <laughs> Look at this. I said, ask me questions, and I got one that I don't know. Really? I want to go. You know? Yeah. The bottom. Yeah. The, the I thought name I of read Bob. something. The name of Bob, I mean, lobbing off the hair, yeah, lobbing bobbing it into the stuff. I mean, that is a really good question, and of all the research I've done, which you can tell I geeked out on this, I can't find why. I'm going to find it for Maybe it's an abbreviation. Mm -hmm. For Robert. <laughs> okay, so last mannequin before our live demonstration model comes up. Uh, this is my little manta ray ball. Why is it a manta ray? It's got a little tail. It's got a little tail. Now, what's cool about this one, and what I wanted to share with you guys about it, what's the shape? It's a what? I heard it. Inverted. Okay, and you can say inverted. You can say you can say a line. You can say triangular is the shape, right? In the Sassoon family, we say triangle shapes are those ones that get longer towards the front. But we call them everything and anything. And honestly, as long as you know what you're talking about, <laughs> rock and roll. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong for calling it something different. I may ask you why you call it that, and if you can give me a good reason, then rock and roll. But aren't we supposed to do that with each other? Dialogue. And we're all supposed to be different. I like that. So, with this little bob, where do we normally start a shape that gets longer in the front? I started it in the front. Interesting, right? So here's what we did. There was an old haircut from a collection before Sassoon moved over to the ABCs, where they are now. It used to be the contemporary classics, right, before that. Uh, for the ABCs, and a lot of these haircuts, there was one of them that I love, it's called the Inside Out. Is anybody familiar with that haircut? Anybody in the room? Show of hands, Inside Out, Sassoonies. Okay, cool, rock and roll. So this haircut, the Inside Out, what's really neat about it is they start a bob in the front, a bit more triangular, with its one length establishment throughout the side, and then as they move into the back, section angles and the finger positionings and elevation change and they move from a one like essentially a one length low graduation because it's still cutting the fingers but into a really nice low external graduation a low sitting graduation so it's a little fuller right but they do it flawlessly and I was like I love that idea 
So instead of moving into graduation, I did a one length pier, starting from the front, moving into the back. Each of my sections began just like this, diagonal back, stream diagonal, vertical diagonal back. Drop down each one, one at a time, with moisture in the hair, and checked out my perimeter. Continued moving through, drop down each section, checked out my perimeter. Did this all the way, each side simultaneously to maintain symmetry, right? So when I got to the back, I had this little football strip of hair. And I looked at it from, from like a direct, I said, wow, that balance is really consistent. And I like that little tail there. I think I'm going to leave that. So that's essentially where that, why that got there. I mean, I call it a manta, and I'm sure you've heard that before. It looks like a, like a stingray. So something a little fun. But the technique behind this was one length, utilizing minimal tension, utilizing minimal elevation, utilizing minimal over direction, but changing how we approach it. Checking ourselves. I know you can do it from back to front. Almost dry. What was almost that? Dry. Dry. Damp. Damp. Yeah. Damp. Everything just, just damp. And this is my little this, this squirt bottle right here. Two, three. 